Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with whatever level that they achieved as athletes and or fighters. But sometimes you will see a last name or cousins of that, you know, athlete that was that level. And everybody seems to fall just a bit short of them or tremendously short. But you see these guys, man, that are all in that camp and they're all evolving in a new way. And they're bringing new stuff into it. Oscar De La Hoya, Felix Trinidad. I mean, what are you going to do? Who are you going to beat? How are you going to beat him? He just happened. He would give it his all. He was in the fight. It just, he, yeah, he just couldn't crack that egg. I mean, he, he get he's, he's competitive through and through. It's not like he's getting dominated and overwhelmed the whole time. Yeah. It's just, um, you know, there, uh, some people, man, you know, it takes a little longer from this to, to, to get to the top of that mountain, man. And, uh, hopefully he does one day. I really, I really hope, man, for him and his family that he, you know, he can put that gold around his waist one day. But That's I mean, it, it's the fight game. You, you don't know what's gonna happen. Mexican Independence Day. We can call this Teddy Atlas here in Las Vegas, Nevada. He's a, you heard it from the champ himself, luckily knocking out the competition. Good evening, everyone. I'm Richard Ortiz, your host of the Fighters Voice, the only voice that matters. And like our guest today, boxing, UFC, you name it, the man can coach it all. Inside of the cage, inside of the ring, outside of the ring, and even the barber shop, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Mr. Rudy Cruz. Welcome to the Fighter's Voice. Thank you for having me again, my friend. Thank you, man. You know where do we pick up at? I mean, where we left off, or are we going to talk about today's press conference this week that happened with Canelo <laughs> and Blanca, or are we just? You know what? I tell you what. Let's talk into. Let's jump right into uh, Bud Crawford. Let, let me know what you thought about him becoming a four division world champion on his victory last Saturday and on going the distance. What did you think about his performance? Uh, is he able to do the same things he used to do at 147 at 154? And who do you think his next opponent will be? I'm going to leave it all up to you, sir. You know, you know, first and foremost, uh, I want to start off with thanking you for having me on once again. I do appreciate the invite, and it's always a pleasure of mine to spend my time with you. Um, you know, with Bud Crawford, man, uh, I think he's going to get a little extra criticism on this one uh, because it, it did look like the spectacular rollout, you know, flawless victory that he's normally putting on out there. But um, the, 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 this... This gentleman that he fought came with a, uh, uh, a weird southpaw European style of, 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 a, of, a, of a, you know, stylistic matchup. And it wasn't easy to figure him out. He was landing some nice right hands on Crawford every once in a while. And um, he kept it. He kept it interesting. I, I just think I, I just don't think Crawford can fully grab the timing of this awkward young man that we we're looking at that night. I think sometimes people just rely on their own. Um... Um, you know, uh, what kind of talent that they have sometimes instead of doing, uh, you know, the research, I'm not saying he didn't do that. He's a true professional, but, mm-hmm. uh, I, and you know, don't take this in a bad way. Uh, the, the European fighters, this is one of the few European fighters that honestly that had a high boxing IQ. He was very focused. He didn't fold and nowhere in the fight. Did he just let go and say, <laughs> okay, I did my best. Now I'm just going to go the distance. He was competing from round one all the way through round 12. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, um, back to what you were saying, you know, you, what you just said, um, it's, it, you're either going to, with, with that European style, you're either going to look, it, it, there's no really good way to come out looking flawless unless you stop them. You know, um, the timing, the, the awkwardness of the lead hand, you know, the, the, the range and the way they, they just fight. It's just different. Bud did a good job. Um, he said, he started landing some clean shots and uh, making himself aware in the later rounds. But um, it was just an awkward, not the most prettiest battle between the two of them. And sometimes, you know, uh, it just happens that way in fighting sometimes, man. Sometimes that your dance partner makes for a nice, smooth transition. And sometimes it's rough and ugly, man. And, you know, this one wasn't as pretty to the eyes of the general fan as as somebody who appreciates it like you and I, who sees uh, the, the talent in the... The craftsmanship between the two of them that they brought to the table that night—it was interesting, man. But um, you know, to be honest with you, he—he's gonna have to sell a little more of himself to get that fight with Canelo if, if that's what he's looking for in the long run. Um, by the eyes of the general public, man, that—that that, you know, the powers that being, it didn't look like it was too much of a shiner for him. But he got the job done. I was impressed. I—I I, I liked the way he handled himself. He didn't get hit. You know, he got hit. But it wasn't too bad to where it made him look, uh, quote unquote, exposed 
or anything of that nature. I just thought it was an awkward fight for him that night. Well, he got hit a little more than his uh, uh, last outing, um, you know, when he became the unified uh, Walter Wade champion of the world. I'm yes. I'm not taking anything from, from anybody. Uh, you know, Bud's been, been studying Spence for, for uh, years now. And just – Bud got, got away with a lot of stuff that night, just being the superb athlete that he is by having the outstanding footwork. And, and sometimes it's okay for Bud just to be Bud Crawford. And that I night agree. he was just Bud Crawford. And I agree. sometimes that is just enough to get you where you need to go. He couldn't figure yeah. him out, but he didn't lay down for him, and he never stopped competing or trying to figure him out. Not at all. You know, Bud's always Bud, man. He, You know, um, regardless, there's always going to be criticism on what you do. And, you know, regardless if you, you know, had a flawless victory, they're going to call that guy a lay-down opponent for you, or or you have a, a bit of, uh, of a tricky night the way he did. But, you know, he kept it clean. He, he walked out without a, 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 a mark on him, and he became, a, like you said, a four-division four world champion. There's not many that can, you know, hold that accolade over their shoulders at the end of the night, man. And he was one of the guys that was able to do it. I had it a very close fight. You know, I had it uh, seven five uh, for uh, Bud, but I want to watch it again. Um, I got to watch the first two rounds because I know every judge gave the first two rounds to Bud Crawford, and I thought maybe uh, there we go. Yeah, and I thought maybe the champion had one of the two. So I want to sit down and watch it again and just with a clear mind. Not that it makes a difference, but it makes a difference to me. Yeah, because a lot of times. Um, what you see is not what you get. And we're going to talk about that on a couple fights that were on the um, undercard there. First of all, I want to congratulate, you know, Jose Valenzuela, another uh, world champion coming out of Robert Garcia's Boxing Academy. Yeah. I don't care if you're born and raised there or you just happen to show up and say, hey, you know what? I need something extra because there's levels in this, not only in MMA, not only in striking and boxing. And you know what, Rudy? There's levels in cutting hair and there's levels in life. So for that's that true, my friend. Time he had a great corner. I believe that was the difference. Um, I'm gonna let you uh, tell me what what was your whole take on the matchup going into the fight, and were you surprised with the outcome? I think you froze up a little bit. I'm sorry, my friend. We we were having a bit of a bad connection. There. Oh, I, hey, I, it, I, it, it happens, on man. I'll tell you what. Okay, what did you think about the matchup? What did you think about the outcome and did the fight pan out exactly the way you seen it going or, you know, were you surprised like everybody else was? Which fight are we talking about? My friend, I'm, I'm, I, talking, I about, I'm got... talking about, uh, Isaac Cruz. And we're talking about, we gave a congratulations to Jose Valenzuela, a, another winner out of Robert Garcia's boxing Academy, another world champion. There we go. There we go. You know, man, um, I love the last name of, of Isaac, you know, of he, he shared, we share the same last name. Right. Um, you know, uh, the guy did, uh, he did a beautiful job of, 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 of boxing, uh, as my father, my, my father was very impressed. Uh, he watched that fight, uh, here with me that night and, and my father was a softball, you know, uh, did a lot of backing up boxing and, and my dad really enjoyed watching the way that young man performed against Isaac. Um, you know, hats off to the young man. As you said, man, that 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 stable uh, is nothing short of of building and or helping champions. You know, achieve the next goal. You know, Roberts Roberts been a guy, man, that's been very high level for a long time. And she, I I mean, one of my I I I remember what twenty some odd years ago, man, him him holding his belt and you know who he took it from, and then once again who he lost it to. Yeah. Uh, do you remember who he lost it to? Yeah, our guy, um, God rest his soul. Uh, oh, gosh. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Camouflage Come on, man. Come on. You know Camouflage what that Camouflage box Camouflage shorts. Uh, I was uh, drove a, a bike. He was, he was uh, in one of the best outings ever. Lost his bout to Floyd Mayweather, of yes. course. And the name needs to pop in my head. You Diego know, Chico Corrales. Yes, Chico. Yes. Chico. Yes, yes. And that was a great fight great fight. it was man it was and and you know i i was uh we've been around a long time watching these you know beautiful you know fights over the years man and that was just yeah. another one but hats off to once again hats off to the to the garcia family um they're 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 a, a they're a staple in boxing man you know and and they hold that crown really high and and you know from the grandfather you know to the to the to the brothers and everybody they they've, even they've got son. even a yeah. son got it going on i mean you know, he's running it. Hey, the whole family, 
don't mean to interrupt you, but you know what? The only thing missing from that, Jim, because when, you know, I've always used the term iron sharpens iron, especially with Robert and, uh, and Mike. Yes, there, there's literally at the door a Viking with just sharpening iron against iron. I, I guess the time travel just dropped him off there. And the only <laughs> thing missing from Robert Garcia's gym is Mickey from Rocky. Other yeah, than that, yeah. I mean, that gym is just. <laughs> you know, God bless the yeah. MMA gyms are great, you know, but. I miss walking into that old concrete, you know, the smell of a boxing gym. You know, uh, you you hear the speed bag and the rhythm in the back. You hear the skipping of the jump rope. Yeah. You hear the pop, pop, pop of, uh, of the of the gym bag. And, uh, you know, it's a different rhythm, different smell, different aura. You know what I mean? Different, different. Nothing. It, it, both sports are combat. But yeah. there is just an old school essence to the skipping of the rope, you know, of boxing and the rhythm of the speed bag. And, you know, just that that old school essence feeling, man, that, uh, you know, that continues to run through my veins. And I miss when I don't when I'm not around it. You know what I love about that? And, and, and this is the honest truth. When you walk in there, you have the Jose Ramirez's, you got the Mikey Garcia's, you have the who's who, the big names that are there, the Virgil Ortiz is in there. And then you see these other cats. And you got the Ban Rodriguez's, Jose Franco's. Yes, sir. And you got these other cats hitting the punching bag. They're kind of in the background or they're jumping rope or 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 they're speeding agility with Dr. Charles Tremley. So you make sure you get a good look at them. Don't overlook them because months will pass by or weeks. Then before you know, you see these guys on, on top rank. You see them on yeah. BBC. You, you, you see yeah. them on, even at, at Marv Nation. Uh, you see them on Eddie Hearn's show. These guys are one call, two calls away. Robert Garcia never turns down a tough fight. He puts his fighters nope. in there. If you're not right now, I'm assuming you're doing the work. I'm assuming you're doing everything that's asked of you to do and on wait mm -hmm. because I answer the phone. The answer is yes. So these young cats, they get the call. They get the opportunity. And I say he's batting at least 85% of these cats that he puts in the ring with these Very true. Level fighters. And they surprise people. Just like when uh, Joshua Franco got a great decision um, – in the bubble when he fought uh, Andrew Maloney uh, and won the world title on the road, he beat top ranks fighter. Top ranks fight, top yeah. rank event. And yes, you know, I love when the judges get it right, you know, so that was a good thing. And he doesn't turn down a hard fight at all. No, man. No, I, I, I mean, you got to step up when it's time, when, when the phone call is, is, is put out there, when the email is sent, you know, that, I mean, the opportunities are, 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 they don't always come, you know, yeah. and when, when they present themselves, man, you know, seal the deal. You know, seal the deal. There's a, that old school saying, man, if, you know, you don't have to be ready if you stay ready. You don't have to get ready if you stay ready. You know, so if you're in fight condition, man, you know, the the when that door comes, comes knocking, man, if the condition's there, you're ready to go. You know, and I'm thinking of an old school fighter, um, Alex Garcia. Alex Garcia, uh, a Mexican heavyweight fighter. He had the opportunity to fight uh, George Foreman when George Foreman was making his run at the heavyweight uh, championship. Mm -hmm, and I remember mm -hmm. Alex Garcia, he said, um, and I remember speaking to him, he said, I turned down the fight because I want to take it when I'm ready. That's what he said. And and when are you ready? When are you truly ready? When are you really, truly ready for such the level as George Foreman? When it would have been his highest payday. It, it would have uh, put his name out there worldwide. Um, sad story. He ended up taking a fight from somebody he was supposed to win. I guess he wasn't focused, got caught in the second round and never happened. And at that you time, know, at that time, $250,000 was a lot of money. I, I believe it is today. Yeah, okay. um, it is today. Yeah, man, you got so, that's, that's a life changer for a lot of people. And that's exactly what you said on you have to stay ready for that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, as as we said, man, you know, sometimes you just get that phone call. Andrew Ruiz. Andy, Andy Ruiz with yep. uh, Anthony Joshua. Yep. You know, he got his opportunity, man. He, he made it happen. Yep. And it changed his life for the rest of his life. You know, and... Uh, if you stay gym ready, man, uh, you know, three weeks, if you can put in those last hard three weeks of training camp, if you're on average of like 65 to 80 to 75 percent of competition ready shape in the gym, those three weeks, if you press and you turn it up, can turn you up to 95 to 105 you know, percent. Just depending on the athlete, you know, and the person and the will, the will, you, you know, my dad's always said, you know. In in champ in, in the last three rounds of a of a championship boxing match, man, sometimes it comes down to who wants it more, you know, Absolutely. who's willing to sacrifice that great moment. You know, you so, you 
you have to dare to be great. If you don't dare to be great, man, you never you, you're gonna sit back in in your in your you know in your room looking at your posters that are up on the wall or seeing some critic talk about you, man. You're gonna wonder and you're gonna beat yourself to death, you know, because you didn't put that hundred percent into it. And you know, you just got to you just got to give it, man. You, it's got to be there. I agree with you. Or you're gonna pass through Vegas or or anywhere and see somebody else's name on the poster on the lights and say to yourself, that could have been me. Or that guy who won the title, I used to rock his world all the time in the gym. Well, because of yeah. you rocking him all the time in the gym, he got better. He became a better person. He did. He worked he harder. Did. He at the end of the day, he wanted it more and didn't take it for granted. And and you know, those are those that's where the champions come from, man. The, you know, the thing of seeing the the quote unquote the difference between the average gym fighter, you know, and you know, the 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 contender and the guy who's ready to be a champion. There's something different about those breeds of champions, man. And you don't really know if you have it until you're in that moment. You know, seize it because God God only knows when you're going to get, an, you know, blessed with another opportunity to show your talents in front of the world. You got to grab it when it's in front of you, man. You know, I've been around people that turn down title opportunities for whatever reason, but that's a whole different segment. You mentioned the name Andy Ruiz. Taking yes, sir. On, uh, Miller, big baby Miller. Big baby. Big guy. Uh, you know, one judge had it 116, 114 for Miller. The other judges had, I believe, 114, 114. Two of the judges, uh, you know, majority decision draw. Yes. What do yes. you think about the matchup? Uh, what do you think about the size difference? Uh, Andy overcoming adversity with his broken hand to finish the mm -hmm. fight. And mm -hmm. like Miller said, hey, man, don't give me excuses. That's boxing. And what do you think about the whole um, the decision? You know, the don't give me any excuses. It's boxing. I, I get that 100%. But when you break your hand and you're limited to 50% of ammunition, uh, you know, of, of, of being able to fire, it, it's a hindrance. And things do happen in fights, man. And, and you know, at every level from the four rounders to the, you know, main event we saw the other, you know, the other night. Yeah. You have to be prepared for what comes in front of you. But nobody is truly, we don't go through breaking our hand and continuing to press in the gym. You know, that doesn't happen. Uh, you get an injury in the gym, you stop, you pull back, you play the safe part, man. You go get your wrist or your hand, your whatever it is checked out, and you go from there. In the middle of live action, it's just like war. I mean, what are you going to do, man? You're going to sit there and cry because you're gun jammed in the middle of a gunfight? You know, you got to be able to clear your chamber, man, and, and, and be ready to go to war again. And uh, that's just, that's where the warrior mentality comes in. And hats off to Andy, man, for being able to stick in there with one hand and pull out even a draw. He got hit a lot more than I I, I, I expected in that fight. Um, I, I I don't know if it's because he's he wants to please the crowd. I think that's what's going on right now. He wants to please the crowd and prove to the world once again that he's that guy. Uh, because there's a race going on, you know, for this this heavyweight uh, crown that's that's yeah. that's presented. And before we know it, man, this I don't know what if Usyk's going to continue on. Uh, if he fights Tyson Fury again, we don't know what's going to happen. Every, you know, we it, it's fighting. Things happen, man. So, well, I'm here in December, I, I, but there has no nothing been final yet. Yeah, nothing's been final, and and I mean, who knows, man? There can be an injury between the two yeah. of them, you know. And with the new mix up of uh, Turkey, you know, uh, the the Sheik, you know, I mean, I, I don't I don't know his full name, so I don't want to disrespect it and, and say it wrong, but um. I, I, I believe that, that, you know, these guys are willing to, to, to um, I, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but if, 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 if somebody can persuade somebody to put on good fights for us, um, I'm not opposed to it, but I'm not, I, I, I don't know, man. I mean, is this, is this a gentleman that has all the money in the world and it's just like, you know, Hey, listen, uh, I want to be entertained about what you guys, what I want to see. So here's the money because I have it. Let's make it happen. You know, so well, uh, I'm not sure. A couple things. I, you know, I like to see Andrew Ruiz run it back. I had it a very close margin. I thought, honestly, I thought Miller pulled it off, you know, uh, by one of the. I was about to say out. the same thing. And l let's talk about, um, you know, when you use the, uh, what are they calling them? Your, your royalness or what were they calling them? Your, uh, your, your hot, your, your uh, greatness, I think is what they, something to that effect. I, you know, I really have it now. I'm not getting corny. I'm just keeping it real. Sometimes I have a, a problem, uh, 
you know, calling anybody that that term with me goes to Jesus and Jesus only. But, you know, I respect for, you know, what they want to call them what, or what have you uh, you want to present to him. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this. He's good for boxing right now. You know, he's getting Oscar De La Hoya together with Eddie Hearn, with, with, together with Bob Arum. Okay. Uh, you know, Al Heyman, uh, you know, and he's visiting gyms. He's going to Garcia's. He's going to. Uh, yeah, Roach's gym. You know, yeah, he, he's going to um, Wild Card. Wild Card. Rudy, I just don't think it's going to end good. Some one of, the, one of these promoters is going to sue him for either you're taking my fighters. That's not what you said. There's something going on here. It's just not going to end well. I'm just telling you that right now. Right now, it's a brand new girlfriend. It's a brand new relationship. Hey. The honeymoon is about to happen. Hey. The man comes in living together no this yeah. is my space no this is what i do no what what i gotta ask you for this is my fighter this is my contract that's what's gonna happen take this show today everybody's gonna know because we're gonna go to the archives when this happens and i agree I, said, no because you got all these guys with eagles de La Hoya wants to control everybody bob aaron wants to be the man eddie hearn wants to be the man uh al Heyman. uh Marv Nation, he works with all these fighters too. I mentioned him because shout out to Marv Nation, the only nation that matters. And then you got all these other other promoters, you know, and I just don't think it's going to end well. Too many egos in the pot. Absolutely. You know, when you make cocido, you know, when you make birria, you know, there's only so many ingredients that go in, man. And you put too much of you anything. Want it too salty, man. It starts tasting a little different than what we're normal to, you know, yeah. man. And, so. was, and, and then he starts saying, there's no reason to add that. It was already good. Yeah, you know, and, and with the recent statements about how uh, he's picking business and personal beats with the UFC and now Canelo, uh, with, with the statements that he made today, yeah. uh, something along the lines of we're going to bury him, you know, uh, or something like, you know, I don't know, I don't want to quote him and get it wrong. Yeah, but you know, I, I read, I read some, lines. and I needed some clarification on that. Does he mean yeah. I'm going to bury Dana White or I'm going to bury because Dana White's having a show the same day or I'm going to bury yeah. Canelo? I don't know. And I want to get the facts straight on that too, because Canelo said the, the man texted me straight up, and I just said, "Look, and all due respect, I'm focused on one person only before I start talking about any other opponent." And that's the way it should be, you know. Let's have and, dinner after the outcome. Sit and it seemed and like my fight. It seemed like the guy didn't like that. No, he. Hey, when you yeah, got I mean, a man I mean, with full I mean, power, Rudy, he doesn't like being told no. He doesn't like being told not right now. Now is now for him. Yes. As as we're yes now I, and I get that but I mean I'm sorry to say man but that goes in his country and for him it doesn't go for everybody. Oh. Canelo Canelo has a lot of money man you know he's gonna do and say what he wants and yeah. and uh, you know I don't know if this gentleman you know and his and his financial influences are gonna be able to persuade especially after saying what he said today. Yeah, um, Canelo hasn't mentioned his name. Um, it hasn't really been too much of uh, of conversation in that area. I think I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, There's no need to. And, He's doing no, what he wants I, right now. Yeah, yeah. I think once you give somebody else an, an, an once you give a side piece, you know, too much uh, insight and availability to know what you're going on and what you're doing. And I don't mean that in a derogatory manner yeah. in any which way, shape, or form. But when you have an outside entity that continues to poke, you know, and want to get inside of this bubble that has been entertaining. Um, has it had has it had its black eyes, man? More than I can count over the years. But um, we 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 come back and and everybody is is used to this formula that is in the boxing world, and it's the formula. Sometimes we don't like the way the formula tastes, or we don't like the way it, you know it, it it doesn't resonate well in our ears. But it it is boxing. Yeah. Um, and if if he wants to come in here and try to change it to the better, I'm all for better. Absolutely, I'm all for better. But I mean, I, don't like do said, it so far. So good. Yeah. But like you said, the, with the iron fist and how he's trying to rule and, you know, you want to come in and just it, it's there's new territory. There's a lot of money involved in this sport of boxing. And I know that gentleman, I, I don't know what is net worth and kind of stuff. I'm pretty sure it's pretty damn deep, <laughs> you know, but boxing is a boxing world and a community, man. And I don't know if Bob Arum, Matchroom, all these gentlemen and these companies that you just mentioned a few minutes ago are Marv Nation and the De La Hoyas, and I don't know if they're willing to split that dollar because ultimately it's a new, it's a business. When you have a new entity coming in and they, they want to present something, 
that still boils down to financial. What are you, what are you taking from my plate? You know, my portions look a little smaller than did the last time I went into the situation. I want Nobody's to know in for that. If in fact they're having conversations behind closed doors to some of these fighters, you know, there's still a word out there. It's called poaching. And, mm-hmm. you know, some promoters will go along with it because they're getting paid too. Mm-hmm. But at the mm-hmm. end, you know, your contract's uh, ending. I'll just give you an example. And, and I'll go ahead and play devil's occupant. Your contract's ending. Hey, let's sit down and sat, let's have lunch. Let's talk. Okay, you would have never known him or say let's talk if it wasn't for me presenting him to you on your card. Yeah. And yeah. that's just the way it is. Because it works 100%. even at the humongous levels to the to the, to the the lowest levels. And I'm talking about a fight that's coming up, and I'm not going to promote it at all. I just will say that it's local in Fresno. Um, I donated my fee last time, a $1,000 ring announcing fee. I donated it to uh, – let, let's keep it real. I donated it to the fallen uh, officers. Uh, officers. This That's happening uh, around, this Saturday, I don't correct? mind getting replaced. I really don't. But don't call me and say, hey, uh, just to let you know, we got somebody else. Uh, we're going to go this direction, this direction. Well, you should have said that before I donated my ring announcing fee to you. So I'll keep it there. Um, I eliminated it out of my circle. I feel better now, now that I put it out in the open. But somebody did text me and say, hey, don't forget they're coming back up. And I said, respectfully, I would not be attending. I have no promotion or any desire to promote um, that particular event. And life goes on. So people do change. And in this business, you know, this. it's what have you done for me lately? It's cutthroat business. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I love the sport of boxing and the sweet science. There's I no loyalty. There really is. And when you find that loyalty, Rudy, embrace it like no other. Because sometimes it don't last. And sometimes it's it's when it's there, it's a beautiful thing. And when it's not, it's just, hey, man. And, you know, man, I, I think it all goes back to the, you know, it's the old school, you know, a man's word is, his, you know, is his honor. If I'm looking yeah. at you in your eye and I'm having a conversation with you and I tell you I'm going to be here or I'm going to do something, it's, you know, we have to keep our word, man. You know, when you're getting too far into the business side of it and business is business, you know, but respect, respect the person that's across from you. You know, if you guys are having a conversation, you look over and you say, hey, listen, I have this, you know, yeah. or we, I will meet you there or I will meet you in the middle of it. Just do your end and I'll do mine. That is, a, I mean, it's 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 so much of an overlooked um, a commodity that I think needs to be coming back. Just a general world, man, and just man-to-man, the handshake. But with so much contracts and everybody's on social media and, you know, the blasphemy of this and the, the, the um, you're talking bad about me on this platform and I'm not yeah. happy with what you did over here. But, you know, man... Um, I, I believe if somebody has, you know, good presence and the energy, me, me, I mean, this is our, our, our fourth, maybe fifth, you know, time sitting down and, 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 you know, having these conversations. And for me, it's a pleasure. I enjoy doing this and, um, you know, it gives not only the coaches a voice, but the fighters a voice, That's you know, right. and uh, it, it, it's important to have that, man. And, you know, the, the, you're not you're you're not gonna I mean you're not gonna sit here and waste your time doing this man this is a love of it because you love doing it yeah and if somebody doesn't appreciate your time for the love of what you're doing at the um at the same time promoting a, a, a not only an athlete but their brand man you know people just have to get on on the train man and understand that you know this is this is this is something that you put your heart into man and and it's genuine and if they don't appreciate gen, you know, genuine and, and honesty, man, then you know, I, 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 I don't understand people nowadays sometimes, man. So thank you for giving me a voice and a platform, man. I, I appreciate you. Absolutely. I, I told you a long time ago when you were on that you know the sport and I love going to uh tit for tat with you and we don't always agree on the same thing. That's what makes it so special. You know, one time yeah. I'll give you an example. I had uh, three guests on and uh, it was Sean Porter over um uh, no, Sean Porter fighting Crawford. Everybody goes, I got Crawford. I got Crawford. I got Crawford. Well, I was pulling for Porter because he's a friend of mine, but I had to change it up. And I said, I got Porter winning just because I didn't want, I had to spice up the show, man. I was like, guys, come on. I mean, that's a no brainer. Everybody's going to go for Crawford. I'm saying. So I just said, I was stuck in that position. I said, okay, well, I'm pulling for part uh, for Porter. And I was going, I go, I got Porter. And so, you know, man, I ended up, but at least I was genuine because I try not to get involved with them. Um, I'll say Jose Ramirez, friend of mine. Okay. Do I think he could beat every 140 pounder out there? I think he can give him a run for the money. I don't know if he <laughs> can clear the table. I'll be rooting for him, but I can't bet on him. And I'm keeping it real 100. 
um, because I never know what Jose Ramirez I'm going to get. Are we going to get Jose Ramirez, the rock star, who just can beat anybody with that body shot and that right hand and that attack and that head movement? Or are we going to get a, a you know a stationary Jose Ramirez that can't really adapt to a southpaw? That's just, that's just me. And I'm not belittling or putting him down. He comes from no, one of the best no, teams out I there. Agree with you, man. One of the best speed and agility coaches out there. But you know, I, I had a pick because everybody. I, I agree. Got Jose. I got Jose. I had Jose. I had, shit. I had Jose over Marvin Hagler. I mean, so I just got to keep it real, you know. You know, uh, you know, and I have those same uh, situations and scenarios, you know, on my end. I, I, you know, being in training with guys like Khabib, you know, and the whole team, you That's know, from, amazing. from Khabib down to a Umar, the, the young gentleman who just yeah. fought Corey Sanhagen this last weekend. You know, I've been around all these guys. And they're teammates of mine. They're friends of mine. They're, you know, and well, what are they, what are they like when they're in the gym and, and they're, they're working out? Because these guys are like sweat tanks, man, when they're done. What, what are they like? Are they something different? Is there something special about them? What, what's so different and special about them? I, I wanted to ask you that. They just don't stop, man. Um, as as just the whole just uh, exterior and interior. You know, the exterior is just as solid as the interior. You know, some people put that facade on the outside of like the image of this is who I am exterior. But when you beat down that wall, there's the interior, yeah. you know, and uh, I see the same rough neck uh, bite down on your mouthpiece and just work ethic out of out of out of the, all those guys. And some are athletically more talented than the other. But what I like to call it is, is Khabib was term was T1 as a Terminator, yeah. you know, and the next the next few were evolved and different and better. Same mission, same intent, you know, but with more tools and more weapons because we see how Islam is coming out here and, and throwing hands and throwing kicks and grappling and putting chokes in and just putting it all together. Khabib was a lot more solid of I'm going to suffocate you, you know, and if you punch me, it's okay. I'm going to walk through it until I get my hands on you and I can suffocate you. But these other guys have other tools and other weapons and they're bringing that to the table. And... That is a work ethic that is, you know, man, I mean, it's back to the championship stuff. You know, I mean, who, who, who do we know? Who do you know? Let me ask you this. This is, this is a legit question. Okay. Who do you know that came out of Marvin Hagler's camp that was eight, an eighth of as, you know, successful as he was? Well, I know his stepbrother, uh, Robbie. Remember Robbie? His step- I don't. His stepbrother. Yeah. He had a stepbrother. Um, he was in some big fights, but he, it just, I mean, Mar- there's only one Marvin Hagler and the camp that they had was the, uh, I'm forgetting the brothers names right now. And they refused to take money from Marvin, but Marvin paid him every single time. But he did have a, a, a stepbrother that was also in camp with him. Uh, Robbie, but I want to say Robbie Sims. I don't remember that yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. We'll look that up later. I'm going to have to yeah, check that one up. Yeah. Out. Yeah. But, but the you know, you... partners that came in, he, he took care of him handsomely. And, and you, you see know, what I mean, brothers, though, but the would uh train other fighters, but no, none ever made that household name like like Marvin Hagler, yeah, yeah. And you know, there's nothing wrong with whatever level that they achieved as athletes yeah. and/or fighters, but sometimes you will see a last name yeah. or cousins of that you know athlete that yeah. was that level, and everybody seems to fall just a bit short of them or tremendously short. But you see these guys, man, that are all in that camp, and they're all evolving in a new way, and they're bringing new stuff into it. Um, but back to what we were talking about, if I can step back, if you don't mind. Yes. With the um, having conflict of like what you said, um, I believe that, you know, uh, can I believe that you know, Jose Ramirez can beat everybody out here? No, but I'm going to be cheering for him the whole time. Yes. Or, you know, you build relationships, you know, one way or another through this industry. You know, so for me, uh, I, I I've came across that uh, a lot. But the biggest one, I would say one of the biggest ones in the last few years coming was uh, Dustin Poirier. I'm, I'm good friends with that guy. We converse constantly. Um, he's a great Very guy. Very well-rounded man. fighter. Yes, he is, man. Yes, he is. And, uh, you know, one of the things that he does, man, is he wears the hat, you know, in, in, into the fight week. You know, you know what the hat he wears? Is that the sauce or the war? War. Yes. He wears I know he has his own hat. sauce, right? 
He has those. Yeah, he does. And, and I've and you know what, man? It's good. I'm not gonna sit here and <laughs> cheap plug for for uh for Dustin, man. Okay. But it, it 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 the sauce is good. It's um it's like uh Tabasco with a twist. It okay. has that vinaigrette of Tabasco, man. But there's a little extra twist in there with flavor. I love I love it. Shout out, Dustin. You know it's a, it's a nice it's a nice hot topic, man. We're gonna have to push and promote it on the show one day. Yeah, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna call him up one day and see if we can get it going. But there you go. You know, having having you know uh, built a relationship with him over the last two three years, um, and knowing and training with Islam and uh, Khabib and you know all those guys, man. Um, it's hard, man, because I, I I as a family man to a father, you know, as Dustin is, you know, watching him and knowing him, seeing him yeah. with interact with his kids and everything, man, and. Seeing that guy, that's that guy, and he gets there, man, and he gets to the top, but he just can't crack that code, you know, and, and uh, it's not like he's not fighting any of the top guys in the world. He's always fighting the top guys, but that's the one of those good guy. guys. The top yeah. guy. Yeah, man, and and I, it's confliction, you know. When he fought Khabib, I kind of just sat there and didn't say too much because I was really close with Khabib. Um, and I just, I, I, I told him the beginning of it when it got announced, Hey man, I'm going to sit back and let you guys, God bless both of you. Yeah. You know, do your thing. But on this last one, man, I was, I was, I was kind of, uh, leaning towards, you know, hopefully Dustin could secure it, but Islam being him and man, the level that they were, we saw a great fight and he pulled it out yeah. the way he did, man. Yeah. You know, he reminds me of, uh, remember the fighter Oba Carr? I do. I used, to, I, I, got to, I used to get around him with Felix Oba. Trinidad, but he he just happened to be around during that era of the of these champions, and they weren't yeah. just regular champions, uh, Rudy. They were elite champions. You know, Oscar De La Hoya, Felix Trinidad. I mean, what, what are you going to do? Who are you going to beat? How are you going to beat him? He just happened. He would give it his know. all. He was in the fight. It just he yeah he just couldn't crack that egg. I mean, he he get he's he's competitive through and through. It's not like he's getting dominated and overwhelmed the whole time. Yeah. It's just, um, you know, there are uh, some people, man, you know, it takes a little longer from this to, to, to get to the top of that mountain, man. And uh, hopefully he does one day. I really, I really hope, man, for him and his family that he can, you know, he can put that gold around his waist one day. But That's I mean, it, it's the fight game. You, you don't know what's going to happen. No, no, you don't know what's going to happen. And, <clears throat> you know, uh, a Stockton native, Manuel Jaime. Gets the call and says, hey, you're fighting on the undercard uh, of Virgil, or no, no, I'm sorry, of Canelo in and, and, Canelo, and, yeah. and you're fighting, guess who you're fighting? Without hesitation, he didn't say, well, let me think about it. He didn't say, I want to fight when I'm ready. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's fighting Roley. And Roley said, man, to be honest, I don't know too much about you. I don't know what kind of style you have or anything. And, um, you know, just for somebody around this area to get that opportunity, to get that call. And that's great. And without hesitation, I remember he was getting ready to fight, uh, 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 what's the guy's name? Shiki. 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 Yeah. With top rank boxing. Mm -hmm. well, Shiki missed uh, uh, the weight. So I text uh, Jaime and I said, look, you're a true professional. Meaning he did what he had to do uh, to make weight. And I said, God yeah. has something better for you. And I said, I'm not just saying it just to say it. Because, you know, a lot of times that's the thing to say or, or what have you. But I meant it. Look at here now. Not just on, on national TV, but pay-per-view. Oh, man, it's a world Millions. stage. He, he actually, oh, and it's televised. He actually opens the TV event with the, with the wow. first television fight. So that, wow, that's man. wonderful and a great opportunity for his team. True blessings, man. True bla Like we said, Stay ready, man. Yeah, Stay ready. He, when yeah. they, you know, and, and he's ready. The you, press you, conference was today. He handled himself behind the mic like a true professional. Didn't fold. Didn't get in a shouting match with him. He just said, I'll be ready. The number, my name was called, and I've been waiting. And, and uh, you know, I have the experience. You know, I've been fighting since I was eight years old. So this is just another fight for me. And yeah. that's mentality yeah. you need going in. Like, oh, I'm looking into the lights. And no, man. And, you know, that, that starts from the bottom up, man. If you don't got that kind of mentality when you walk into the gym when you're, you know, 17, 16 you're not gonna have it when you're 27 you know and and uh you know it just yesterday i was at the gym and um we had one of our amateurs that walked in and you know he uh my 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 compadre coach mike moreno he asked me he says hey mike moreno what do you weigh shout yeah. out to mike moreno shout, What's out up, to mike. Buddy? shout out to mike um he looked over at me and he, uh, he um mike goes hey man what do you think i said about him for what day he says that you know couple weeks you know for the 559 that's what um ask him so he asked him what he weighed he told him what he weighed 
And then he, he replied to me, he says, hey, uh, you want to fight in a couple weeks? He was like, hell yeah. And I looked at him and I said, hey, I gave him a dap. And I said, that's what I'm talking about, young man. That's what I'm talking about. You're game enough to go ahead and get in there and, and scrap and throw your blows, man, and, and get these. Amateurs are amateurs, man. It's for uh, experience purposes, you know, to find where you're strong and find where you're weak, man, you know, and, and work on it. We'll work on it in the long run, man. So I, I'm I'm glad that uh, that young man showed that energy of like I'm ready to get it, you know. Exactly. You didn't, didn't hesitate. And uh, you don't get that, y'all. You don't get that, man. And you know when somebody's ready to fight, man, is when they step up to the plate right there. And you know you don't know what ball is going to be thrown your way. No, but you're willing to take a swing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love that. What I love did, that. What did you think of Jared Big Baby Anderson getting stopped? Um, you know, I know Woo! top rank. I, I mean, you know, Brad Goodman is one of the best matchmakers, Hall of Fame matchmakers, a uh, personal friend yeah, of mine. I know he was matched up very well leading up to that fight. And I knew because I watched him some earlier fights, uh, he got hit with a couple punches and just didn't react that I think a heavyweight should react uh, before this fight coming up. And, um, you know, I went out and, you know, I like Jared Anderson, but, uh, you know, I, I picked the upset. I, I picked that he would be stopped. Not that I'm proud or bragging about it. No, 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 man. I, anything can happen in boxing. He was um, supposed to fight Deontay Wilder. There was talks about it. And talking about that, he would be the one to take over when all the smoke was clear, according to yes, Tom Rank and his handlers and what have you. And all mm -hmm. it takes is one big heavy punch by a true heavyweight that wants it, that wants uh, what he has, whether it's him headlining, his his name on the poster, his his name out on lights. And he got that opportunity and made good and closed the show. Didn't leave it into the judges. He closed the show. What was that gentleman's name? B Bukau? Bakau? How do, how do you say? I, I, I think you're pronouncing it right. I He fought the style. He walked him down and remind me of Big George Foreman. Bro. Exactly. You're, he walked him down. Same page, he man. He wasted punches. But every once in a while when he threw a flurry, he would throw three or four to land that one, even if he missed. But when he would land it, then when he was on that target and timed him, it was that was it. That was Bro, we're right here with that George Foreman reference. I said the same shit to my dad, man. I said, Dad, this guy reminds me of a young George. Like when George and, and – we'll get into this one in a second, but, you know, the, the whole George and Ron Lyle fight, you know. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, oh that's a classic right there. Oh, my God, man. You know, but let's take it back to the Anderson fight this other night. Um, I like Jared also. Um, I, I, I think Jared might have slightly overlooked this guy. I think the, um, the confidence that he brought into it, some, some would call it cockiness. I think it was confidence. Um, I think, uh, the young man has been walking through a lot of players, but yeah. the, if we, if we dig into the depth of the opponents that he's faced, a lot of them have been ex football players, you know, and, and big guys that are there to get hit. Blown up, uh, and, cruiserweights. Yes, and uh, this man was a big freaking man, six six. That's a big human being, and he wasn't he wasn't anything show, shy of being a thick man, being that big. Also, um, the wrong approach. I, I think the wrong approach to the fight. I don't know if that was his original game plan was to bang with this man, or it was just uh, no other option. No other option after he got sat down. He couldn't get back to boxing anymore because no, the guy was no, awkwardly in his face. No. I, I agree with you with the wrong approach. I think he should have used his speed, agility, and his athletic ability to take him into the later yeah. rounds. And then maybe, you know, try to win on some points with the jab. Just like Evander Holyfield when he fought Riddick Bowe. He tried to bang with the bigger man, and that cost him. When he could have used his movement and his speed and, you know, just the in and out, and you know, like he did on the rematch. A lot of people think that was boring, but it was tactical, and he got the belt back. But I don't think Anderson should have been trading with this big guy. Once oh, Anderson man. hit him flush and the guy didn't go anywhere, he's not going to go anywhere off that. You, you got to hit him with the jab. You got to hit him with something he doesn't see and just move around. He had the athletic ability in the youth, in the legs, to possibly give him a boxing lesson or at least close the gap until the later rounds. That's just my take. I, I, I agree, man. I agree. But sometimes, man, ego takes over game plan. It does. Um, and, um, you know, that, that ego needs to be put in the I, – I, I have a saying. If you have a if, if you're coming to the gym, you know, if you have an eagle, fold that shit up and put it in the glove compartment. <laughs> yep. You know, don't bring it in here. Yep. You know, you can open that folder back up when you get outside, man, but in here if you bring it in here, you might get humbled. You know, and sometimes, man, you know, even you know, what are you going to do with the light my dad used to say? 
he had a saying, what are you going to do when the lights go off and the lights come on? And before I had a fight, I didn't know what that meant. Do you know what, the, what do you think he meant by that? Look, can I ask you? Okay. What did he say? He said, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when the lights go off, off? And, and the lights come on? What does he mean? The lights go off because you got hit or, or, or how you handle yourself when the lights go on inside of the ring and when they go off outside of the ring, how you handle yourself outside of the ring? The second half of it. Okay. Um, what are you going to do? Because in the arena, the lights go off in the arena. Yes. But then the lights come on above you. Yeah, that's right. Inside of the ring. So when all our eyes are on you, how are you going to perform that night? You know, because yeah. you can be a, you can be a gym warrior all you want. You yeah. can perform in front of the best of them yeah. in, in the gym, in your comfort zone. Yes. But when you get out there and it's unscripted, you know, it's some, never scripted some, in the gym, some, but there's a protection some. level. There's a safety level. Yeah. The only person that is there for your safety is a referee. And all he's going to do is stop the fight when it's time. Yeah, that's it. You know, and if you if you can't embrace that moment and learn how to do, learn how to function when the lights go off and the lights come on, you know, and, uh, you know, not many get that. And I, I, I praise you, you know, and I'm thankful that you got that because you've been around this long enough to know what I meant. You know, lights go out, you know, you thought about it was, you know, of this. But the second half of it is what are you going to do when the lights go off yeah. and the lights come on? Because yeah. when the lights come on in the arena, it's silent. Yeah. Everybody's waiting for you to perform. And, you know, and, and sometimes you got those guys in the gym that are not, well, they're gym rats. They're just not, they're, they're having a lousy, lazy camp, uh, a training camp. But when those lights go on, peak time, brother, everything, the Boom. timing, everything just clicks. And I'm thinking, why can't you do this in the gym? But some people, it's like some people always don't interview good, but they get the job. Yeah, guys that really, uh, while he wasn't my first choice, they're hell of they're they're great workers. Yeah, so it, yeah, it, it's it's it it's called balance, and there's just some that have it all. There's some that do, some man. That you know, for instance, uh, my shout out to Christian Avalos, the Land Shark, man. We just defended our belt again for there the third go. time. Uh, you know, um, you know, I I always try to give these guys good mental upbeats and and, and you know and and get into their heads and. Keep them focused, you know, and uh, we we fought three times, three championship fights, man, in under 160 days. And that's a lot of the body. Active. That's a lot of the body. And, you know, we were getting pressed by the management the other day to have them ready for October 26th. And I told the management, I said, hey, listen, man, first and foremost, man, we got to let him heal. You know, he's been through a lot and I, I won't give you an answer until... You know, we, we you get him in the gym. His foot's still swollen. We need to see how he's doing. He then replied, um, the gentleman replied, well, you know, I need an answer soon. I need to know. We got good momentum going and blah, 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 blah. I say, listen, man, momentum is good, one thing. But physical and mental health is, you know, two of the most important Longevity, things. Man. You know, and if we can't give him this, man, he's got a couple oranges to pick. And I mean a couple of fruits of his labor. There's yeah. just a couple there, but let them pick them and peel it and enjoy it for a minute. You know, we need yeah, to get that's... better. We need to grow. We need to let them heal. And then when it's time to get back to the drawing board, you know, and the, you get a reply from management and it's like, hey, man, come on, you know, put your personal hat on and take the management hat off. Yeah. But it's hard to do because it's the business side of it, you know, so yeah, um, I completely seeing understand. the business side of it, man, I, I got to I, I, I. Being around it for so long, I'm blessed to have either dealt with these people uh, in the last five years, 10 years, 12 years, or known them as they were active fighters themselves, and now they're on the other side of it. So, you know, it's just the, it's the side of the business, man. It's the side of the business, man. It, it is a side of the business, and it's unfortunate. If unfortunate um, you know, I mean, <sighs> fighters need to rest, and, and that that's the best medicine for any fighter. It, it's it's not money. Yeah. It's not that therapy is good, yes, but rest. Rest is rest because you don't get it back. You don't get that time where the mind rests, the muscles heal, and and, and you get to just motivate it yourself again and, and get that hunger again and mm -hmm. just, and just mm -hmm. you know, watch and visualize your career and get to taste those fruits once and for all, like you said it. Let me enjoy this win first, you know, and then yeah. let me move on, and then I'll defend it, you know. And So February, February 22nd, February, I'm sorry to interrupt you, my oh, friend. Sorry about that. So February 22nd, he fought for the belt. We won it. May 25th, he defended the belt in a hard three-round war, which we knocked the guy out in the third round. Uh, July 25th, 
he defended the belt again in a in a, in a split decision three round battle tough fight tough fight so to get a call to go back october 26th that's like that's hard on the body and you know as as a coach you were supposed to save their fighters from themselves yeah you know and i i going back to what we originally got into this conversation about was you know um i noticed my fighter was irritable you know, this last camp, which is a good thing. But at the same time, I saw the mental pressure that was on him, you know, um, by having to turn around and be that guy so much over and over and over. And I, 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 I really wanted him win, lose or draw to take a break after this, because, uh, and, right. and I saw a grapefruit size, half of a grapefruit size lump on his foot. You know, after the fight was over and we had the doctors check it out, they they understood that it was an injury that happened during the bout. And, you know, but I also tell my fighters, hey, listen, hey, listen, if this shit doesn't suck right now, we're not doing camp right. It's supposed to fucking suck six yeah. weeks, four weeks, three weeks, you know, in between it. Yep. That's what, if we're not feeling achy or like, damn, so, you know, this is not, you know. I, I'm not feeling good about this right now or my leg hurts. There's always that. But it's up to the coach to push them and, and make sure that it's not uh, laziness. Make sure it's actual an ache and tire. You know, because having this mental pressure on you, sometimes the mind wants to escape in other areas. And it doesn't mean you're afraid <laughs> of the moment to fight. Yeah. It's just you need a little rest sometimes. You know, sometimes, and I'm glad and I'm thankful that he got the W out of it. You know, shout out to our opponent that we had, man, from Stockton out there. You know, the the gentleman was a stud, man. He had uh, 16 pro fights, you know, and uh, the experience showed. He dealt with it well, and and uh, it's time for my guy to take a break. Um, you know, we have some injuries, and there's some things, you know, when you go through a tough fight um, and you get pushed by a high-level guy, some things get mistakes get uh um exposed yeah. and there's things that you want to work on and you, sometimes you need these fights to see where your athlete and or fighter is at so that way you can make adjustments and see what we need to focus on and what we need to do before we step into this realm of uh, a, a new fight again and i'm glad that we're going to get a little break now so we can rest and we can get back to the fundamentals of uh, of growth in the areas that we need to compete with the top levels at. So we, we, we got some work to do. We have some work to do, but I'm super proud of the guy. Super proud of him. Well, it sounds like you're doing your job and that he has a great team around him. And you know, every team, you know, needs an, uh, an advisor. And that's that person that doesn't uh, benefit from everything, but they benefit from keeping their fighters safe. And like you said, keeping them safe from himself sometimes. Because yeah. the fighter is made, they're a different breed. They're going to want to get in there regardless, but, or the money, or yeah, I want to do it again, but the body has to rest. The mind has to rest. It's consumed so much stuff, not just physically, but mentally, man, you know, okay, now I got to yeah. do this to my body. I got to punish my body again. I got to cut weight again. Mm -hmm. I want to refurbish mm -hmm. my body. I want to get my heart checked. You know, I want to, I just want to breathe a little bit and, and all that takes place. And you got to put all that on hold to start training camp again. A lot of people yeah. don't know what these fighters go through, man. It's, 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 it's mental big time. They're away, away from their loved ones. When I say loved ones, that's all the way around from what your intake, from your bad habits of, of maybe eating on what you want to do, not when yeah, you're not in camp or, or your, you know, physically uh, loved ones or just missing certain things and to stay focused over and over and over again. You know, you, you, you got to sometimes that you don't want the mind to be injured. You don't, man. It, it's, it's, it's a delicate thing, man. I mean, we're, we're looked at as these warriors and, you know, that are supposed to just have this exterior and interior, you know, that is impenetrable. But I mean, we're, we're, we're people, we're men, we're athletes, you know, and, um, you know, sometimes man, that pat on the back and being checked on is appreciated. Yeah. And, you know, when, when I, when I call my guys, you know, uh, I, I call them, I call them quite often, you know, I need to check on them to see how he's doing. But at the same time, I understand during uh, the last four days of training camp where he's cutting weight and everything, you don't want to answer the same questions over and over and over. Mm -hmm. You know, you've been asked a thousand times, how do you feel? How's the weight? What's next? You know, and uh, if at the same time, they have to be ready to go on that journey because when you get to a certain level, you go from having one interview as a beginner, you know, and then that's it, to having 13 to 15 to 20 interviews in a week. 
you know, and you have to manage your workout to eating the time frame that, you know, all that. Yeah. So it's an, it, they have to learn how to embrace this whole journey. And, uh, I'm glad I, 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 I'm, I had the experience that I did to learn to pass this knowledge to the next, uh, to, to the next people that are behind me. And, yeah. you know, we have a great staff where we're at, man. And, uh, um, you I'm know, have I to would, check I, out one of his, his events, uh, Rudy, I'm gonna have to go check out one of those, uh, uh, fights there, and maybe do some coverage there. And we're talking about uh, what, what's the promoter you'd be working with next when his next fight is, or, or um, you, uh, you know you what, know, man, or, the... or if you don't know, you can inform me, and, and we'll talk about it. We'll bring it on the show, and we'll talk about his upcoming fight and the things that you do. And uh, you know, I'll, I'll go cover that. It's been a while since I covered an MMA event, and not by choice. I've been wanting to, so yeah, I need to get out. Man, there. you know, I, I mean, I, I, we all love you on this side of the fence, man. You know. It's, 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 uh, you know, the voice, bro, you're the voice, man. I, I love, I love the logo. I love the slogan, you know, the fighter's voice, man. And, you know, a lot of us don't get that, you know, and a lot of coaches don't get that. And you're giving, you're giving not only the, the, the ex fighter, but the current coach and young fighters platforms. And, you know, we all need this, man. Um, you know, if it wasn't for you sitting down and building your office with the WBC hat, with the Benavides logo, with the Spence Crawford, with the <laughs> WB cells, with the golden gloves, man, like it's mad appreciated over here, man. And thank you, man. And it's respected. And, and, um, you know, man, people, we, we all have places in this community that niches together as, as, as a fight community and bro, brother, believe me, man, you're, you're. Your stitches are are very well, you know, weaved through this process of what we're doing, and it's appreciated on my half, man. So if you don't Thank get you, that from I, some I, people, I appreciate that. I I truly appreciate your platform and your time, man. It's, it's always great, you know. I, I I don't get many people that uh, that I can speak with boxing knowledge as deep as we do, man. There's tons of cut. There's tons of stuff. We haven't even got into like the whole Olympic stuff, you know, with what's uh. going on on over there. You know, we haven't got into there's a lot been some of controversy situations. there. You know, there's been some people there and there's been some uh, uh, people that said you need to do your research. And there's people that says, well, I've done my research and, uh, uh, you know, looks are one thing. Power is deceiving. And it, it's just uh, every comment is not going to be for everybody. And it's always going to upset people and, and it may be upset people with the truth or not the truth. And, you know, there's Raider fans or Cowboy fans or Ram fans. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, I, you know, you know, everybody's going to be different. The only thing I say is when they comment on, on the Instagram, as I say, bro, keep, keep it classy. There's no reason yeah. to call me the P word or the a hole yeah. or I need to study more. Wait, what do you mean? I need to study more. I mean, I, I take it as, as it goes. I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. So what I want to say is this and that, but I go, no, sometimes I'll leave it to the other ones. They'll, they'll go tit for tat with him. I've been there. done and, that. You know, I'll only do that. When it needs to be in check, when I say, look, if you do that, you're going to be deleted. There's no race here. There's none of this here. And there's no reason for this. So I'll get on there. And sometimes I got to be referee. The name calling, man, and, and the disrespect of, of yeah. opinions is, is not appreciated. No. And, you know, we all have them, you know, and, and, and you know, respect the, 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 the person to the left or right in the front of you, you know. Absolutely. And if they can't follow those rules, man, then they have to might get another platform. <laughs> it's hard sometimes because the, these youngsters and these guys, they actually think they know the sport. They actually think LeBron James is better than Michael Jordan. That's because they've never seen Kobe play <laughs> or Michael Jordan. And that's just yeah. to be my example. I like, I like LeBron James. I, I like what he, you know, that he's a great basketball player you know put him with the with the magics or what have you but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's only one michael jordan and there's, there's only one, one, one mj fans. man and you know and i wasn't even a bulls fan you know but i understand who who he is oh, i'm and a new york Knicks fan and he he busted us up uh, every year during that time so man great to a hey, back you know we can mention on it man that was a great era of basketball it was patrick ewing i mean Shoot, man. man, it was it was yeah, it was good. Reggie Miller, oh, he man. bust us up too. Reggie was Reggie was the man, oh, man. He Reggie was that guy. Touch. Such ugly, such such an ugly three, you know, such an ugly but beautiful three point shot. You know that guy. I, you know, I I I love me some good old basketball, man. I, I I'm not That's as interested. Basketball in Basketball was real basketball when they still play defense. Yes, and they don't allow them too many anymore. You know, it's it's getting you a little softer. You play defense and you get a tactical, you get a foul. Yeah, but I understand why they don't play uh, defense anymore. Exactly. You know, I mean, I, yeah, let's get that guy out of here, man. I just, I, I just, I just really hope that sports that are physical can can you know continue to be that way. And uh, you know, the platforms that 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 lay out the voice as you're doing, man, to continue to go ahead and give people an opinion and an option to 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 voice their opinion, man. And and hey, man. 
we appreciate your time, brother. You know, hey man, uh, hey, you always got a place here, man. You always got a platform here. It just takes a phone call away, and you know, I keep the rotation pretty solid. I, I do. And then, uh, uh, actually, you know, I'll go ahead and drop this right now. As soon as David Benavides comes back from vacation, then he'll be on the show. But uh, once that confirmation is there, then we'll let everybody know. We'll have some questions for him. And I'm not going to ask Rook really? Canelo. He's he's tired of hearing that. I like know. Evander Holyfield, I you know, I had one a shot of a question for him. Everybody was asking him about Mike Tyson. So I had to think real quick. I said, Evander, how's Ewin doing? He's, oh, okay, he's doing pretty good. And that was what his son, uh, uh, Ewin, stood for Evander Wynn. So he got ah. tired of dealing with all the Mike Tyson questions. So when I asked him that, then he stopped and he, he wasn't in a hurry to move on to the next question. So, you know, I'm, I don't, you know, I may have I, Belanger for calling him names or, you know, uh, like, you know, he looks good as a light heavyweight. He does yeah, put the weight yeah. on great, you know, yeah. uh, let, let him uh, adapt a little more to that, that weight. And so do you think he's going to be able to deal with Canelo's uh, punching power? At 168, I think Canelo can hurt him. It's going to be at 168, correct? Yeah, that has to be at 168. Yeah. 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 I know it'll be yeah. at 175 for a shot. Uh, at Bivol uh, or, 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 yeah, an one of those older, guys. Uh, crusher, right? Yeah. Which the yeah. Crusher, I don't know why, didn't drop that right hand. But it is what it is. And when he fought Bivol, was somebody young that just, and, you know, he, he got able to give him the proper distance instead of trying to he get did. inside. He did. He did. So he I, sat outside a little too lazy and he got comfortable throwing the punches. I thought Pet Bull should have done the same thing on his last outing. Yeah. You know, that's just me watching from the couch. No, man. Hey, you know, you got a voice. You got a voice, man. We hey, got man. an opinion. I, I want to it. I want to thank Marv Nation in the zone for letting me express that voice about a month ago. I was able to go on national TV and commentate with uh, the one, the only uh, Bethel Duran. And that was uh, through Marv Nation promotions uh, with nice. Fernando Vargas Jr. And, and, it, and it was good. It, it was good to finally say, wow. I mean, I can do this for a living. Keep the calls coming in, man. I'm your guy. You know, we went to uh, Texas and bro, it was hot as heck, but it was well worth it. It was, you know, some, you got to go where you're uncomfortable to accept those opportunities, just like fighters do. You think I said, well, I'm not ready. Uh, go get Max or so. I said, yes, I would be there. When's the flight? What time's the fight? Who are the fighters? Let me do my research. Boom. Jumped right in there. So that's super cool, man. Yeah, that's super yeah, cool, man. Yeah, it, it was. Cool. I appreciate your work, man. And you know, it's, 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 uh, you have a large body of it, man. And, and, uh, you know, like I said, bro, you've been around for a long time and I, you know, appreciate you giving me an uh, opportunity to come on and, 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 you no, know, spend some chitter chatter with you, man, about this fight world that we love. Absolutely, man. We got to get some more uh, time together, and I appreciate you coming on right now. And uh, you know, when, when you're not here or you're cutting hair, how do we follow you, man? What, what, what's your Instagram? Uh, you know, I asked you this Instagram. Are you on Facebook, Instagram? You on Twitter? How do we? How do the followers? Uh, you know, I I, I I have my Instagram, man. It's S L I K B X R, uh, Slick Boxer. Um, I have it. I have it private, but I do accept people that uh, are on the platform mm -hmm. and that are familiar with the sport and stuff like that. And, uh, 4843 East Cesar Chavez Boulevard, old Kings Canyon Boulevard. Now, um, um, that's where you can come see me if you want some cuts, man. And the what, throne. What's, oh, what's your barber? Yeah. What's, what's your shop called? Oh, come on, man. In this corner cuts. <laughs> I love it. I love come it. Come on, man. Come on. I dude. love it. You, you know, gotta get some shirts when, like that, man. Oh man, there they, I I got a few man. I got I got a new I got like five different shirts coming on out. Okay. And uh I will I as soon as I get them finished man, I will bless them your way man and okay. you know you got one on the house on me. I, hey, I got to take care of you too man. I got to take care of you with the Fighters Voice t-shirt. Yes sir. Appreciate. You. I don't have one. I, I, I got to get you one. I man, definitely got to get you one. That's for sure. Iron sharpens iron, brother. You know that. For sure, my brother, for sure man and uh you know like once I said, you know, once again man, like I said, you just keep doing what you're doing man and you know we we appreciate you, man. And if you don't feel if you don't feel that way, you know, you got love coming from our, our direction, man. We appreciate you over here. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate that. And I appreciate all the fans. Oh, always a thumbs up for Richie. Always, brother. Always, always. brother. Always. I appreciate all the fans, the followers, and supporters. And thank you for uh, blowing up my Instagram, our Instagram, because it belongs to you. The voice belongs to you. And if you haven't, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's www.youtube.com slash the fighter's voice. Remember, mm -hmm. every fighter has a voice, and so do you. As always, it's a wrap. Thumbs up for Richie. Thumbs up. God bless. Fans, it's not goodbye, but until next week. Remember, remember, remember. It's always voiceography at its finest.
So on behalf of Richard Ortiz, the special guests, and all the crew, saying hasta luego, babies. And always, thanks for listening.